Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? This week's podcast is brought to you by thefirstyearsofmarriage.com, a brand new newsletter about the conversations, problems, and challenges that begin once the honeymoon ends. This is a free newsletter written for you by me, Jen Glantz. It is perfect for anybody who is recently engaged, had a pandemic elopement, or just got married. Hey, if you've been married for a couple of years, for 10 years, 15 years, you might enjoy this newsletter as well. Check it out, thefirstyearsofmarriage.com slash welcome, thefirstyearsofmarriage.com slash welcome. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. You know what's interesting is that I wasn't planning on doing a podcast about this topic, but the more I thought about it and I posted on LinkedIn about it, I felt like this could be an awesome and helpful episode for you. So I sat down yesterday and I decided to make this podcast happen. The topic of this podcast is how to build something new. And I'm going to explain what I'm building that's new. I'm going to explain what I did to build that, what worked and what didn't work. So if you're listening right now and there's something you're thinking about doing, whether it's building a podcast, building a newsletter, building your Instagram account, building a side hustle, building maybe a new career for yourself, anything truly in your life, this episode could really help you. And I mean that truly, like whether you're somebody who's building something for yourself or you're looking for a new job and you're not quite sure what that job is or you're not quite sure of yourself, whatever you're working on in life, my goal is that some of the tips in this episode help you with that. Let me back up a little bit. A couple of months ago, I applied to be on this series. A person who I've looked up to for so many years named James Altucher, he is an author, a podcast host. He's had some very viral newsletters and things go, you know, happen in his life. For example, he is the person who wrote the article that went viral last year called New York City is Dead. It was the viral article you saw everywhere. He wrote that. He's also written a lot of books that I absolutely adore. One book is called Choose Yourself. Another book is called Skip the Line and he's got an incredible podcast. Well, I've been listening to his podcast for a really long time. I've been following him since 2012. And he came out with a new series on his podcast called Make You a Millionaire, where he picks random people and he coaches them on an idea, whether an existing business or a new one, in hopes that it makes a million dollars. Well, the titles sound catchy to me, and I figured if anybody in the world could give me advice that I would want to follow, it would be this person. So a couple of months ago, after listening to some of the episodes he's done with other people, I wrote a really short, catching email, and I applied. I put my name in the hat. I said, I would love to be on this series. Here's why. I got accepted to be on the show thanks to that email that I sent out, which again means sometimes you have to create your own opportunities. There was no place to apply for this series. There was no information. I just researched and found his email and sent this off. So I created my own opportunity here, and luckily I got selected for it. And we started recording these episodes. So basically what it is, is it's coaching, him coaching me, that he records and he posts on his podcast for millions of people to listen to. And in the first couple of episodes, I shared the really deep details of Bridesmaid for Hire and Jen Glantz, a lot of my metrics and my income and my mistakes and my successes. And I'll link to one of the episodes in the show notes here that you can check out. But it was pretty vulnerable and I was super authentic to the point where I was so nervous before it came out that I had overshared. And when I listened to the episode, I realized that I didn't overshare. I was just extremely, extremely honest. And I've gotten so many emails from strangers who I've never met before thanking me for that vulnerability. Because sometimes when you listen to people in business or people who have started something, they share all about the great or they really just are so high level with their struggles. 
I am somebody who is very open. I am a very, very open person. Once you get me talking, I don't stop. And I overshare. And a lot of that oversharing are things that are just real details about what's going on with me. So in our coaching session, around coaching session number two, James helped me think of the idea for a new thing to start. And this is a new newsletter that I'm starting called The First Years of Marriage. It's a newsletter about the topics, challenges, problems, and conversations that begin once the honeymoon ends. It's a free newsletter. We're going to figure out how to make money from it later. And a lot of the ways we're going to make money from it is not through charging subscribers, which is something I'll tell you about in another episode. But in this first couple of um, coaching sessions, what we discovered was that this was a natural next project for me to do. I have been writing about relationships for the past 10 years. I started off writing about dating when I moved to New York in 2011, wrote it on my blog, wrote a book called All My Friends Are Engaged. I was the face of J-Date. I wrote a column for J-Date, the Jewish dating website. I wrote hundreds of articles on dating. Then I became the bridesmaid for hire and wrote hundreds of articles about being a bridesmaid. I wrote the book, Always a Bridesmaid for Hire. I wrote just so much about the the intricate details of, of weddings and people and relationships. And then I got engaged myself and married and wrote finally the bride and wrote another chunk of 100 articles about getting married and getting engaged and all of that. So Coming up with this newsletter, a newsletter that talks openly, honestly, and a bit raw about the taboo topics that happen when you're newlywed is something I felt passionate about when we discussed it. So I built this newsletter and I wanted to do it very differently than my past newsletters. For the past seven years, I've been sending out a newsletter called the Monday Pick Me Up, but I wanted to do this differently. So I chose my platform for the newsletter. I chose substack.com, which is free to use as long as your newsletter is free. And then if you do charge subscriptions, they take a cut of that. But my newsletter is free, so I don't have to pay a dollar for using the platform, which is so nice, by the way. It's really cool. It's pretty simple to use. It's not beautifully designed like a MailChimp or a Flowdesk, but it's pretty simple. So that's the place I went. I bought the domain name, thefirstyearsofmarriage.com, and I linked it to the newsletter so that when you type that in, it goes straight to Substack. And then I made a goal for myself. James didn't give me this goal, but I had this goal for myself that within 48 hours, I challenged myself to get 100 people to subscribe. Now, that would be easy if the topic was general, if the topic was marriage or dating or weddings, but this is a bit more of a niche audience because it's people who recently got married. And why I'm focusing on that is, A, I'm in that boat of people, and two, the more I was doing research, the more I actually learned that around 20% of marriages that fail will fail within the first couple of years. And I wanted to explore why that was. So. That was my audience that I picked. And I decided to come up with 10 different ways that I was gonna hit 100 subscribers in under 48 hours. So I'm gonna read you my list of 10 ways. I did all of these 10 things in 48 hours. Then I'm gonna go back and tell you the three things that worked really well and the things that didn't work well. And again, if you are building anything in your life, whether it's part of your career, whether you're building a new career for yourself, starting a side hustle, anything, I think these tips could really help you. So let's say right now you're trying to figure out who you are, what you're good at. Make a list of 10 ways that you're going to figure that out. Maybe it's calling a friend. Maybe it's posting a poll on social media. Maybe it's taking inventory on yourself. Maybe it's taking my personal branding course. If you're going to start a podcast, think of 10 different ways right now that you can get that podcast up and running by the end of September. So these lists of 10 are so powerful. And I'm going to read you the list of 10 that I made of how I wanted to get 100 subscribers in 48 hours. So number one was sending an email to my existing list of subscribers. I have about 60,000 people who subscribe to my Bridesmaid for Hire email. I have about 2,500 that subscribe to my Finally the Bride email. Because those are wedding-based audiences, people who enjoy weddings, enjoy things around weddings, I figured that would be my go-to place to start first. So I sent out an email to both of those audiences. I wrote the email, I changed what I wrote in each of them, I didn't make them promotional, I told the story in each of them and then linked to the newsletter. So that was number one. Number two was creating a fun TikTok video. I have a pretty engaged audience on TikTok, so I figured I would create a TikTok video that showcased what the first years of marriage was. Now, TikTok is not necessarily a place to promote a newsletter, but I figured why not give it a try. Number three, I put a banner ad about 
this new newsletter on my Bridesmaid for Hire website. So I have a bunch of different websites that I own and run. Why not put my own ad on the website? Number four is I use this site called Quora, which is a lot like Reddit, but Quora is a place where people ask questions and then you can respond. So it's less of a thread like Reddit and more one-off questions about different topics. So I went on Quora, I searched newlyweds, I searched first couple of years of marriage, and I answered about 15 questions around that topic linking to the newsletter. Number five, I asked I added it to my social media link tree. So I have a bunch of social media accounts. And when you go to the bio on Instagram, there's a link tree that has a bunch of different links on it. So I added the newsletter on a link there. I get about 5,000 people a week looking at the link tree on my Bridesmaid for Hire Instagram account. So I figured putting it there could bring traffic. Number six. I asked you to subscribe. So if I saw you on the street, if I was texting you, if I knew you, I would ask you to subscribe. I was my own walking billboard for those 48 hours. The only thing I didn't do was plaster the logo on a t-shirt, but you better believe I am printing those as we speak. Number seven, I posted about it in relevant Facebook groups. So I run a bunch of Facebook groups for Bridesmaid for Hire, for Finally the Bride. I run one for this podcast, which you should join called You're Not Getting Any Younger. And I'm also in a bunch of wedding focused Facebook groups. So I posted in all of those Facebook groups. And that was a great way of showcasing this new newsletter, which is free to so many people in the audience. Number eight, I posted about it on my social media accounts. I posted stories, I posted IGTVs, I posted about it all over my social media. Number nine, I texted all my close friends. So before I shared it with anybody else, I put out texts to about 10 of my closest friends and asked them to share it with anybody in their life they thought would enjoy the newsletter. And number 10, because Adam, my husband, is a Facebook ad specialist, I said, okay, let's put up some Facebook ads. And that was the last thing that we did. I set a budget of about $30 for um, over the 48 hours and we ran some ads. So those are the 10 ways that I tried to get to 100 subscribers. And again, whatever it is you're trying to do, because all of us in life are trying to do something, make a list of 10 ways that you're going to try to do it. Now, here's the trick with the 10 ways, the 10 list. By number seven, it's gonna feel like a struggle. It's gonna feel super hard. So when you get to number 10, or you get to number seven, that's usually a, a time for you to pause and really push forward on what else you can do to get closer to your goal. So I shared with you my list. In 48 hours, I did hit 100. I hit over 100. I think I got like 120 people in those 48 hours. And here are the three things that worked. Number one, posting in Facebook groups worked really, really well. And a lot of that is because people in these Facebook groups are usually in these groups because of a certain common hobby, topic, or interest. So when I posted in a lot of wedding Facebook groups or just other Facebook groups where my demographic was in, they took to the newsletter because it was relevant and applicable to their lives. Number two, emailing my audience worked well because many of my subscribers are interested in the wedding space or in early marriage or whatever it is from Bridesmaid for Hire and my Finally the Bride book. Because I emailed those lists, a lot of people clicked over and some of them did subscribe. And number three, sharing it with close friends also worked really well. You know, think about it. If I texted 10 close friends and they each shared it with five people, that's 50 new subscribers right there. I don't think that's what happened, but hey, maybe they shared it with with five people each and maybe one person subscribed from their group of friends. That's enough for me. That's an easy way of getting a couple of subscribers. Everything else worked pretty decently, but here's what didn't work at all. Number one, tons of social media posts. I find that when we post on social media a lot, People are busy. They're scrolling through their phones super quickly. They're not really stopping to understand something new that you're posting. So when you're posting about something new, a brand, a product, a business, a project, people might scroll over it too quickly. Number two, the banner ads on my website also didn't work very well. I get decent traffic, but again, I think some people were just coming to my website. They weren't looking necessarily for a brand new project to subscribe to. And number three, Facebook ads did not work well. And a lot of the reasons why was A, I set a pretty low budget of about $15 a day, which is super low for really anything to happen. And number two, my creative was really bad. I spent about an hour recording a short video, coming up with creative for these 
ads that wasn't thoughtful. And when I looked back at the ads, it was so clear to me after the money was spent and the ads were done that I didn't spend enough time making it not confusing, making it engaging, making people actually want to subscribe to the newsletter. So those were some of the fails that I had, but it was great because look, I did this list of 10, I hit my goal, and now I have a brand new list of 10. And I'm sharing this with you because I'm in the process of building something new and I've built so many things before. I built my blog, the things I learned from, I've built three books, I built this podcast you're listening to, I built Finally the Bride, I built Bridesmaid for Hire, I've built so many different things and now I'm building something in real time and super excited to share with you. So if you liked this episode, maybe you want more episodes like this on how I'm building things, let me know. Send me an email, jenglance at gmail.com, send me a DM on that Instagram at Jen Glance or come say hello inside of the You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. I would love to hear from you. And you better believe that one of the things on my list this week is to ask you to subscribe to the newsletter. Head to the firstyearsofmarriage.com slash welcome. That's the firstyearsofmarriage.com slash welcome and subscribe. And if you can, if you can do this, share it with some friends. This newsletter is gonna be a game changer for people who are going through the first couple of years of marriage. So if you know anybody engaged, recently married, had a pandemic elopement, send this over to them. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glance. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.